very much, Anthony. Hello, friends. Hello, Vida. Good afternoon. I hope you had a good lunch. The title of my speech is Hope. What is the other alternative? You have a choice. The other, the other choice is no hope. <laughs> so you have a choice. Well, this morning I woke up at 4:30, as usual. Look out of my window, and I saw I couldn't see much. The buildings in front were just blocked by the haze, smog, fog. Call it whatever. It was just a blanket of grey mass. And I tell myself, I hope that the weather will be better. The sky will be clear. What do we have now? Beautiful sky. I hope that today will be warmer. What is this like? Warm. I hope that I will meet many good friends. What do we have now? I have good friends, right? And what I hope you will do is shake hands with the person next to you and say, "Hey, great to be with you. Please." I was not wrong again. I was not wrong again. Hope is better than no hope. No hope when there's a corner on the day. But when there's hope, when I hope that we will shake hands with each other, think in terms of the joy that came into everybody's heart just now. Before that, every one of us were locked in our little cell. Now we open up beyond ourselves. That is what hope gives us. Now, how many of us are here in China? Way back, or first came to China way back in 1986. Put up your hand, please. Yeah? Okay. No, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, Anthony, you were. In those days, in 1986, the people in China was full of hope, but they were absolutely very poor. Many of them just recovered from many decades of starvation because the Chinese government was collecting as much money as they can to repay the debts to Russia. So everybody was on an austerity drive. And I remember where I live overseas, my relatives would literally buy clothes, put them into white cloth, bundle them up, and send them to China. So that it will be distributed to very many of the relatives and friends here in China. Those were the days. Those were not the glorious days of China. But where it was glorious is that the people in China had this great hope. Hope that China will one day excel in technology. Hope that one day China will excel in methodologies. Hope that one day China will excel. Sell in finance, and today what have we got? We have this realization of hope. Now, just think in terms of a situation whereby, in 1986, at that point in time, China never even think of having this hope. What will happen to China today? Now, ask ourselves: What will happen to the world? What will happen to us? Will we be here to enjoy this hope? And today, China is actually a major driving force in hoping to create, as Alan said, happiness. And how do we define happiness? First of all, before we define happiness, I like to define hope. I searched the dictionary today and found that hope, which is taken very lightly, quite often, is actually defined in the Oxford Dictionary as a combination. Of expectations and desire; those two are very powerful values, extremely powerful 
they are the driving force because basically if our expectations is up there, very high up, and our desire is to reach it and even go beyond it, you can imagine the wonders that we can do, the achievements that we can make, not only for ourselves, not only for our generation, but for posterity to come. And that is the moving force. So, as an industrial engineer, Anthony introduced me as an engineer. True. As an industrial engineer, I'm trained to do one thing, and that is to translate abstract ideas, especially, or even words, into practical methodologies. So what did I do that made me recently successful in life as an industrial engineer? What's that? I translated hope into happiness. In other words, wherever I worked, I tell all my staff, all the managers and their staff that report to them, what is important is that we must have a vision that everybody in our organization must be happy. Happiness is our goal. Money will come. Money will come if everyone is happy. It's automatic. So we really work very hard so that every member is happy. And what we do is this, we say, all right, how do I put hope into people? At the end of the year, at the end of the fiscal year, if we make X dollars, what we are going to do is to have a big party. And it depends on how much money we make. We are going to have a bigger party if we make double that. How do we have a bigger party? Bring your wives along, bring your children along, and let's have a gala day. And we are talking in terms of 600 workers. Oh, they're so happy. They really go for it. The second part of the system that I used was operations. What is to be done? When to do it? Who to do it? And at the same time, how to do it? But not just for the sake of doing. But locked inside, the hope is there to do it. Good job. The hope is there to plan well, to design well, and to achieve. That was it. And the third one, as you will guess, I talk about H-O. Happiness, operations. The next one is P. P for people. People are the very essence that we are here today. Not cats, not dogs. For many of us, maybe cats and dogs. But at the end of the day, <laughs> We cannot expect a dog to produce a baby for us, right? Let's be fair. <laughs> many, many people who own dogs think they can, but cannot. <laughs> I hear some discussions going on there. We might like to share that afterwards. I, I see it's quite funny. <laughs> so, basically, what I'm getting at is, at the end of the day, it's people that makes things work. And it's people that we're working for. So if we plant hope into people, then chances are we get what we want. And then the last one, oh, I love this, E. E stands for enthusiasm. Now, if we are not enthusiastic, if we are not passionate about our hope, forget it. You might as well say, I have no hope. You might as well tell somebody who is very enthusiastic to say that, oh, your plan don't work. You kill him right on the spot. So what I'm trying to get at is very, very important. Apart from cultivating hope within ourselves, what is very important is that we must not put the hope that other people have in their minds and in their hearts. That is one of the cruelest things that people can do to another person. A person who have hope and for us to say, no, this won't work, that won't work, without even investigating, without even finding out why it wouldn't work. Literally pouring water on fire. That's terrible. Ma Muhammad Gandhi once said, and this, thank you for not mentioning it, so this gives me a chance to mention it. Our famous Mahatma Gandhi, the first Prime Minister of India, said, what is true in an individual 
is also true in a nation. But if the individual do not lose their heart and their hope in it, it's ever so true. If we believe in something strongly, pass it on. And then encourage others to be hopeful. This is what I found. And at the end of the day, we'll have a beautiful day like that. And I'd like to end my speech with just a very, very short one-minute story. And this is ever so true. I mentioned about hope being able to be turned into a system. I'd like to mention about hope taking another angle. In 1992, I ate some rotten stingray. <laughs> First of all, we are not supposed to eat stingray. I went to eat it for it. But it was really rotten. But what I did then was that I know that it was very fishy. So I got it down with beer. And I had one week of diarrhea. And after my diarrhea, I had two legs that swell up like elephant trunks. Yes. And I had six pints of water drain up from my knee every week. Nothing I can do. And I was in crutches for three months. When I was lying in bed, I said, I hope I will be able to walk again. I hope I will be able to. Now, this is 2012. I'm going to climb the Great Wall with you, mates. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>